Hey, and welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast, a podcast for people who want to get no BS information about fitness and know that fitness is about so much more than losing scale weight. It's about feeling confident in your skin and empowered in your life. I'm your host, Tura Virta, personal trainer, strength and nutrition coach, and most of all, a husband of my beautiful wife, Miriam. Each week, my guests and me will give you some no BS fitness tips and motivate you to take action in your own personal fitness journey as we talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset, personal development, and executing in life with enjoyable but still effective strategies. If your goal is to look better, feel, and be strong, and experience transformation from inside out, you, my friend, are in the right place. Thank you for jumping in, and now let's jump into today's episode. Hey, and welcome to this Fit Me to Fitness podcast. Today, I talk about five positive habits that can save your life and, and also your waistline. And But that is something what uh, usually happens when you focus on improving your health, you might end up losing weight without as a kind of side effect. And um, and uh, this is this is for most people, and especially for me, and for many, many people who I work with, uh, as especially when you get... Uh, at certain age, uh, you might have some way to lose, but the most important goal is uh, to improve your health. And uh, and uh, when you are doing it, when you focus on those things that uh, are bringing something more for your health, usually it's uh, it's can it can it's uh, why it's important. It's first of all, it's a lot easier to do uh, focus on uh, improving your health instead of trying to. Uh, trying to lose fat, which might feel so frustrating and so hard. And, um, but because if you, if you really think it, like, what is the difference? Like fat loss or, or a muscle gain or something, it's kind of performance. And, uh, and that is often like that it, it leads that, you know, you have some metrics, some goals, what you want to improve. And, uh, then if you want to lose fat, let's say you want to go from 40% to 30% fat. It's kind of performance, but if you just focus on things what are improving your health, it's it's a lot easier. Like because if you if you think like a, for example decisions what you are making thousands per day, either maybe you don't even realize that you are making them, but you make them anyways. Just some of them are just already so uh, habits what you are doing without even thinking about it without even noticing about it but uh, decisions like uh, just normal decisions are are you going to brush your teeth are you what clothes you are wearing uh, are, how you are going to work are you driving a car are you taking take are you walking uh, what you are going to eat those are all decisions just an examples what kind of decisions you are making and most of them you are doing with kind of autopilot and this is this is like a in to think it uh, how it makes how how you can make it easier those decisions like i don't say that you have to get each of them correctly but let's say that you make thousand decisions per day and now at the moment like improving your health you are doing maybe 300 good decisions 300 are okay and 400 could be better and now if you could change like uh, that you could make uh, maybe 400 good decisions 500 okay and 200 what you could improve imagine what kind of results that might might lead for your health and then as a result you might end up seeing as a side effect that you are actually getting body what you want feeling con more confident that you want and uh, but to get into those topics and uh, what i what i love to there was a great example of uh, heidi one of my group coaching clients who is coming work out working out with me every week and uh and we were talking it's now four months ago and uh, we were talking she said that she need to she now she have got to a point that she need to start doing something and then she was asking like she had many friends were doing some kind of different diets and uh and uh, she was asking me that what I think about intermittent fasting, cutting carbs, like those, those, those were things what uh, have worked for her in the past. And I said, if those things were not what you were able, that you were able to maintain your results, those things are probably not helping. So I challenged her to become aware what she's eating. And she actually, she started to follow, like not 
trying to even not even trying to make some changes in the picking, but just writing down everything she was eating. And then she figured out that there were so many different things what she was eating without actually noticing it. And she learned to understand that how much how many calories had a slice of pizza, half pizza. Uh, some other foods would see thought that those were not like a carbs or sweets and uh, and uh, this made her realize like uh, and I said try to start adding protein and as uh, she started to add protein and that is uh, that was leading that she started to feel so full like it decreased her appetite so this is this is something what most people don't think like that you are you know that you have I'm sure you have heard about protein how important it is and uh, uh, especially when you are aging and um, for muscles and do not lose muscle mass and that kind of stuff but if you don't know how much protein you are currently eating and how much you should get and for example for Heidi it was she was looking first like that she thought that she was eating protein but in the end it was like 50 grams per day and uh, her goal should be well over 100 grams so she would need to make it like almost triple triple that amount and but she in, uh, started to increase it finding new ways to think about finding new foods what she didn't mind eating and then all that was leading automatically kind of that she started to realize that okay now she's not that hungry than before and obviously that was leading that she was eating less so uh, that comes that uh, brings me to the point that about nutrition so when you focus instead of thinking like was, uh, what i hear many people they think that they have to leave all sugars away they have to leave all carbs away or reduce dr drastically carbs or some specific foods what they might think that they eat too much and this is kind of that mindset that if you if you try to take one food maybe it's your favorite foods completely away it's going to be only a matter of time before you eat it again but instead of when you start to think it otherwise adding something adding things like what are improving your health it becomes in the end effect is the same you are the ultimate goal is that you eat less calories than you consume as i'm i'm sure you know about the calorie deficit as you are listening to this so this is the only which is still the only way to lose fat and uh, and when you do when you start adding things which have uh, some kind of uh, uh, essential nutrients and uh, and uh, reduce like you can eat so much food like because i'm i'm my example is that i'm a person who loves food i i had to figure out the ways to eat as much volume as possible while hitting my calories and obviously it's not always easy because i i really love food and uh, and uh, my problem is what is but it's another story uh, that i can't leave food behind i need to finish my plate this is something i know i'm i'm struggling with it still at age of 41 but uh, it's something what i what i need to learn and there are some ways i have been improving but it's still there and it's it's not easy to change that things to, to leave something behind but when i make sure that uh, uh, foods what i'm eating they are in uh, in uh, lower calories and uh, high in protein and then you know it's not even i'm kind of overeating it's uh, it's still i'm still staying within my calories so uh, what what you should be then focusing on your balanced nutrition is that first step is what i always tell is that those two most important thing is to add some form of uh, protein or add protein if you are not getting like a, what is the good protein goal it's um, uh, uh, most influencers tell that uh, uh, two grams per kilo body weight or gram per pound that's uh, but that is for me it's a very very high range and like for example Hades example if I would tell her to eat from first day one uh, three times more protein than earlier probably she would end up quitting but when you are learning to waste waste uh, like best examples what I love using is that to just simply making a list of your uh, protein foods what you don't mind eating and then starting to think over protein like that what is what is going to be your protein source at the breakfast at lunch at dinner at snacks and then let's say that first goal what is very good what is bare minimum for most people is to get 100 grams 
And when you get 100 grams, it could be like that. It would mean that uh, if you divide it, if you eat, for example, three meals per day, it could be 30 grams for breakfast, uh, 40 grams for lunch, 30 grams for dinner, and you have your 100 grams of protein. And then learning foods, what you enjoy eating or you don't mind eating because protein might be something that it's not uh, what you naturally enjoy eating, but finding a ways how to add that more protein. And when you do it, when you add it, you start to feel less hungrier uh, because it's most satiating macronutrient and it's automatically leading that you are eating some other stuff. Other thing, what you should be adding is some kind of fiber. Fiber, which is in whole grains, uh, fruits are a great source of fiber. And uh, then third one is kind of that low uh, calorie, high volume foods like uh, vegetables, which obviously provide some kind of vitamins and minerals, which are kind of that healthy stuff. But uh, when you are thinking like that, what you could be adding and when you add more as much as you can that kind of healthy stuff which is like a whole foods and uh, and uh, whole foods i love to take it what is minimal processed and uh, how to know what is like it's not it's nothing there's nothing dangerous you don't need to be scared of eating some processed stuff but if you think foods what you are eating like for example carbs carbs are not making you fat even some people are telling but if you think that you eat uh, one ingredient foods like a uh, uh, we had a, in my be sustainable beast call with uh, Ina, and Ina was a little bit scared of eating carbs. And I said, if you and she was asking, what is what are good sources of carbs? And I said that think think one ingredient carbs, for example, potatoes, rice. There is only one ingredient or banana. There is only one ingredient in those foods. And then when you look labels, then more ingredients you find, more processed it is. But if you have just one ingredient foods, those are the best kind of uh, uh, foods what you could be eating, which are like kind of those whole foods. And how it's going to help them, it's uh, it's going to stabilize your blood sugar levels and uh, and you, you are not going to get probably those uh, energy, <clears throat> energy crashes or having a lot of cravings like for almost all people who are starting to add protein who are not eating they realize that they are snacking a lot less they don't crave uh, so much sweet as those as protein is decreasing your cravings like drastically with together with fiber and uh, i'm not telling that you have to add everything at the once but starting to think that how you could be improving your health and how you could include somehow more those foods and it leads that you are reducing automatically something else and then obviously then there is uh, some other other things like uh, healthy fats and uh, uh, those kind of things which are important too but uh, but uh, I'm not going to go any deeper in this episode about those but just thinking thinking how it's uh, it's um, uh, going to help when you are starting thinking a little bit opposite what most people are thinking and instead of taking things away, starting to add things. Then uh, part two is adding some kind of physical activity. And uh, and this is these are not things like what you probably you haven't heard. But uh, but what is like what I what I what I realize for myself now, because I what I love to use myself, like I, I love tracking all kinds of data. I love tracking my steps. I love tracking my uh, weight. I take I wake every single morning at the same time. It's not that I don't have any any goal at the moment. I just want to stay where I am. I feel very good. But uh, the thing what was what happened was that I was uh, I was looking my weight because I how I use it. I don't because I I know I have learned. I, it wasn't always that way, but now I know that the scale weight is only data. And I collect it like I collect my steps. I maybe I watch my finances. There is no difference. It's just the data. And uh, like with the uh, money, I hope I I have a month that there is uh, coming more in than going out. And if not, then I it's time to check do some something against it. But um, but same thing is with my weight. I I'll take average weight per week. So I take I measure myself every day, every morning at the same time after I I have been in toilet, and it's it, it's just in my tracking app, and then I see weekly average. And now within the past uh, two three weeks, like my wife uh, started to tell me that hey Tura, what is going on? That uh, when we were on vacation in summertime, you looked so good, and now to be honest with you, it start to 
go in a opposite direction. And as the day I, I have noticed, my scale weight was a little bit up some days, and some days it was back in normal. And then I was I was looking back. I I looked my my average weight per week, and I was looking at holy shit, it's it's it was not a lot, but uh, like three four hundred grams per week on average. And uh, that for past three, four weeks. So gained over kilo 1.5 or something in uh, three, four weeks. And I was like, okay, this is now it's I'm recognizing this trend. Now I have to look. And then I was thinking that what I what I have been doing so differently, what I have been doing. And like, I, ha- I, I feel like that I have been eating the same way as uh, but because I'm not I'm not tracking my every single food. I try, really try to focus on getting enough protein. And I felt like that with my nutrition, obviously, maybe I was a little bit more loose with that. But um, but there was no no big change. And then I realized that what is what have changed is that now kind of new routines, uh, courses, uh, uh, do whether I haven't been that active. And then I was looking at how is my how my steps have been. And so that, wow, I have my average amount per day have decreased 5,000 steps. I was averaging in uh, month of August, July, June, 15,000, maybe it was even in uh, in May, I think I had 18,000 on average because uh, obviously weather is better, you walk more. Uh, we had a, my wife had a vacation. We were walking every morning, 30, 40 minutes. And now that habit, I, I haven't been doing it's a, it's a lot darker, it's colder and I haven't been doing it. And I was looking at now I average 10,000. So obviously there was missing a lot of uh, movement, like what is not exercise because exercise I haven't been, I have been doing basically same things. And this made me realize that, wow, this uh, non-exercise activity, it have decreased so much that uh, it's, it's, and it's, it's really hard to recognize. I, I wasn't, I wasn't totally aware of before I saw those, uh, that data, what is, what is, why it's happening. And then now it's, it's a lot easier to start to tell to myself that now it's time to go for a walk or making smarter decisions when I don't need to use car, I walk or, or add some quick walks. Uh, and that is that is now this week when I when I record this I have been doing it and uh, now the trend is going again on opposite direction obviously with a little bit smarter food choices but this is this is the way what is what is uh, adding things so adding steps adding walks and uh, and when you do it it's the simplest way to add some kind of activity so uh, adding what you are currently averaging. If you get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 steps more per day, and then after that, you can, there is no that you have to take 10,000 steps. That's very individual. But what you are currently doing, uh, adding 2,000 steps, what you are currently doing, that's realistic and that's, uh, that's possible. And that makes huge impact on a way like how you are looking. And obviously, it's in, in, it improves your health too. And, uh, and uh, it's, for example, walking like uh, in my previous podcast episode, I was talking about calories, and that is that is uh, one of the best ways to improve your overall health and endurance. And uh, another thing, what is what is uh, very important to add is some form of resistance training. So strength training, lifting weights, uh, using body weight uh, bands, and because uh, this is something like especially older we get. Uh, we are losing automatically muscle mass if we don't fight against it. So there is that uh, protein and some form of resistance training, which is helping you to prevent that, especially if you are trying to lose weight, because uh, um, if you your goal is only to lose weight, uh, your body doesn't care if you lose it from your muscle mass or if it's from your um, uh, fats. So obviously you want, want it to be from fats, but your body doesn't care. It takes it where it's uh, easier available. And that is basically calorie deficit that you are losing some form of uh, tissue. So, so uh, adding strength training, and it don't have to be strength training, something that depending on your goals, but uh, I would say that if you do it one time per week, you are able to maintain where you are. And if you start to do, if you are able to get two sessions per week, three, four 
uh, that is when you start to make progress and increasing that muscle mass. And uh, and but I will do more episodes. So I have more episodes where I go deeper on exact strength training what you are doing. So I'm not going deeper in this episode. Um, so and this is then some just basically adding some activity. And and the best way best way is to finding some kind of activities you love to make it kind of uh, what is at the same time that you are improving your uh, health and uh, and uh, improving your endurance, improving your strength, but it doesn't feel like that, you know, you do it only for fat, to losing fat, that you have to exercise to lose fat, because this is, again, something that you, when you focus on exercise to losing weight or losing fat, you are, you are, it's kind of performance, and then it might feel hard, but if you focus on things, what actually makes you feel good, it's a lot easier, a lot more sustainable. And the best way is what is what is what I always, if, even if you don't enjoy doing it, like I don't enjoy doing my strength trainings, but I do it because I know that in long term, this is something what is what makes me feel so much better and allows me to eat more calories when I'm resting. So this is the benefit of strength training that it increases your metabolism and uh, and uh, making you your muscles feel uh, more toned or and you are just simply stronger and this is this is just uh, uh what is what what you should have or should include some form of resistance and strength training for your uh training regimen then uh third thing what is is uh what is often misunderstood or not talked enough is quality of sleep and um uh, how that quality of sleep it's uh first of all how it's affecting obviously you know your energy levels and uh, but also for weight management it's uh, uh it's regulating your hormones related to stress and appetite so there are uh, several studies that if you are sleeping not sleeping at least seven hours you are going to have more hunger and cravings so there was an interesting study which showed that um that I think people who were sleeping six hours versus eight hours or was five and seven. But anyway, anyway, there was amount was 300 calories. Those people were eating more who were sleeping less. So per day. So it's, it's, there is a, it's a scientifically proven fact that you are going to eat more when you don't sleep enough. And obviously, uh, when you sleep, don't sleep enough. Your, your your energy levels are lower, which are leading again that you are not uh, uh, moving outside of your workouts. Even you might be doing your workouts, but then beside that, and it's not only it's not only amount of steps that movement. It's it's like kind of uh, facial impressions, uh, how you are if you are talking, are you using your hands? This is all what needs energy, and this is when you don't sleep enough, you are like a little bit more passive even you take your steps you do your workouts but outside of that it's it's affecting a lot more than you think so uh what is one thing for sleep what have changed my i had a podcast episode it's uh with uh, dr selby harris uh, who is a sleep doctor and uh, and uh, what i learned from her is that timing for for creating that kind of bed routine and trying to go to sleep for at the same time like obviously you know about that uh, limiting screen time but what she said uh, that uh, sleep time like you don't need to like what is the most important that you are not watching your phone you can watch some television or something but that you are not scrolling using your finger at the same time so that you are kind of in calm pace and that is still totally fine for most people but just reducing light and that uh, and the best thing that it actually starts everything starts creating better sleep routine starts in your morning that you get actually some kind of uh, light like if you have possibility to get sunlight is the most ideal but if you don't have if you live in a place where is no sunlight in the morning when you wake up even some like led light or something it's helping you to your body to understand that you are actually awake your brain understands that you are awake and then it makes you that you are later at night you are getting tired and uh and because if you don't do it, you your body, your brain doesn't understand that it's it's morning, it's day, it's time to be awake. But when you get that light early early in the morning, you are actually uh, recognizing it that it's uh, your brain is recognizing that it's it's morning, and then you get tired later on. So, but if you are interested, if you suffer with your 
sleep just uh, check out that my episode i will i will put that link to do, to uh show notes now i so this is this is a very very it was i learned so much from that episode from uh selby uh then uh number four what is adding third thing what you should be at is drinking water so hydration so it's um uh it's helping for digestion it's uh, helping for nutrient absorption and uh, all kind of the deto detoxification so so there is there is a, a kind of that connection what is between that uh, dehydration and reduced energy levels so uh, this that's why you have probably heard that drinking water might actually boost your metabolism so more you are able to drink water better it is for just you are clearing your body kind of detox in your body you don't need to have any other detox detox than your body so just reminding yourself like that is that is now what i what i like that was something what i really struggled like was if i i i know that if i start to feel thirsty i'm probably already dehydrated so it says that when i when i work i sit on my desk i have my two bottles of water so they are uh so i know that then my goal is every morning that i have those two bottles done by midday and um, i know that it's one and a half liters of water and then i repeat i eat during the lunch and then afternoon i have the same two bottles so it's i know that when i have those goals done they are i i have my three liters of water so this is something like other tip what i love to use is just to uh put some rubber bands on your water bottle if you have a half bottle of water rubber band whatever your goal is if it's uh, two liters if it's two and a half three liters just put as many rubber bands as you need to have and every time you your bottle is empty remove one band and uh, so this way you know what you are getting and it's a lot easier to kind of stay on track and uh, and like for me i try just try to put that bottle visible always so i don't forget to drink because it's it's easy to forget uh things and uh, obviously if i re realized that that night you know i didn't drink i i'm at that age that i can't if i drink water uh close to bedtime i know that i'm going to wake up several times during the day during the night to go for toilet so for me it's not worth it that's why i i i try to get that water in already during the day so so and uh and other thing is that alcohol is by the way that is not uh counting it's dehydrating you so don't alcohol don't count and uh and uh, alcohol we had a interesting conversation how alcohol is uh, uh, in my be sustainable beast call this week how alcohol actually even one glass like i said if you it's totally fine every once in a while but if you know effects like us um, you might be feeling like that alcohol it helps you, you it might help you to uh, fell asleep easier and you might feel like that you sleep better when you drink some alcohol but if you have never tracked your sleep and look what it actually does it decreases quality of your sleep and drastically so even you might feel like you fell asleep faster in the end you do a lot more harm than good with alcohol and uh, and if you get used to that kind of rhythm that you need some kind of alcohol to fell asleep uh, it's it's doing so much harm like for me i i love to track like i said i'm i'm a big fan of tracking my all kind of health metrics and sleep is one of those things and uh, and uh, it's not that i still i i still enjoy eating uh, or drinking wine or beer every once in a while but i don't do it on daily basis it might be on weekend but i know that how it's affecting my sleep because um, um it's a uh, it's a uh, first of all even if i drink one beer or one glass of wine close to my bedtime my heart resting heartbeat is five beats higher if i have more alcohol it's probably like a 10 beats higher and uh, all other like recovery it's a lot poorer and uh, uh, overall i feel next day that i don't have so much energy i'm more hungrier as my quality of sleep haven't been that good as it was uh, even quantity was probably even higher than it would normally be so alcohol is that these are just trends like and obviously it's not that still uh, i don't i never do it but uh, at least i know what it is and uh, it's it's uh, 
uh, just helping to make those decisions, those healthier decisions that if I really need it, if it's okay to have one glass of wine or do I need three or if I need one beer or is that tree helping me or or do I need to have anything at all? So this is, it's just all about making those healthier and better decisions, like uh, the whole topic of this episode is. And then the last thing, but it's not the least, is your stress management. So how that uh, chronic stress, it's, uh, it's going to lead uh, hormonal imbalances. And that is often uh, encouraging weight gain. So for many people who are struggling, like they blame uh, their hormonal. Like now, if you look social media, it's full of kind of hormonal experts and what is balancing your hormones to lose weight. It's yes, your hormones affect weight loss, but how they are affecting, how you are fixing them. It's simply uh, these simple things, these five things, what I'm talking. If you are doing these things, you don't need to, get some hormonal balance uh, things it's going automatically they will be in balance so so when you have that when you are able to reduce your stress somehow like uh, because your body is in flight or uh, fight or flight response and uh, and when you are able to reduce it like somehow i'm talking a little bit about how to actually reduce it it's a uh, uh, it's you are going to balance your hormones and usually your weight management, everything, your sleep, everything is going to get better. And uh, what what are the best examples? Like, uh, okay, somebody is enjoying meditation, yoga, or some breathing exercises. Those are like things. I, I love breathing exercises, but I'm not a big fan of meditation or yoga. But what I have, under, what, what really helps me to reduce my stress is that i try to journal i like i love to talk about these things and that's why i'm talking here but um, if i if i'm and I'm, one thing what helped me was that i when i made when it was a covid time a couple of years ago i made a decision that i don't read any news and that is like that taking that kind of anxiety away and uh and when i don't know because how news are created today unfortunately it's it's all some drama or something what creates even more anxiety like uh, and uh, if you are following using social media social media platforms they don't care how anxious you are how depressed you are their only goal is that you spend more time in their app so so this is uh, this is one thing if you if you follow accounts or if you feel like that you are more uh stressed or more anxious while watching after watching social media try be without go take some break from social media or or unfollow those accounts what makes you feel anxious for specific foods or for anything if, or if you feel like that there is too much like kind of uh, shocking news do yourself favor and spend less time there and instead Go for nature, go for a walk, do something what you enjoy rather than just the time trying to distract you with that social media because it's really it's really making more harm than good. And um, and then for reducing stress, it's really uh, finding some hobbies, spending time in nature, and uh, being with the real persons, talking with the real persons. Like for me and my wife, the best thing is that what we do, uh, we go for a walk. We walk. 30 minutes we try to do it every single day without any phones or anything it's just our time to for our relationship reduce stress talk about things what have happened during the day and uh and just it and this is this is the best thing what you can do it's uh at least for me you know obviously maybe you don't have time for do it but uh just trying to do things what you naturally enjoy and uh, and giving you kind of uh that um time for doing things you actually enjoy because this is this life uh, it can be it can be challenging there is good times bad times but more you focus on those uh, good things and uh, and what are bringing more to you than instead of taking away better you are and uh, these five things uh, instead of focusing on adding things and uh, doing things slowly you don't need to do all five things uh, in one time but focusing picking up maybe one thing one of these five things what you try to focus at the time and then when you when it becomes new habit then it's time to add 
another thing. And uh, when you are more more of these things, like I said in the beginning, those decisions you are making daily, more you focus on what is doing good for your health, health instead of focusing on some numeric or specific goal, what is kind of performance goal, easier it becomes when you in- include these uh, positive habits and time is working for you and you can you can in the end you don't even your that is not your main focus as a side effect you might have a uh, lot other benefits than just your improving your health what is still in the end it's the most important thing what you can do for yourself so this was uh episode for today if you find i'm curious always to hear from you uh just email me to at fitmituro.com or if you find this episode valuable obviously i would appreciate if you could share it take a screenshot share it in your instagram story and tag me so i can give some love and uh, obviously what is helping more than uh, you you can believe is those uh, are those five star reviews so i really thank you for all those who have done five star give five star review in uh, apple and in itunes in spotify they are helping so much so thank you for those who are doing it and if you haven't done it i would really really appreciate it as uh, i don't that's all what i ask from you so thank you for listening and talk to you soon hold up friend do you love fit me to fitness podcast if so the best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on itunes I know every podcaster wants you to leave a review, but it's because those reviews help the podcast to reach more people. I truly want to know what you think and if this particle episode resonated with you, would you also please share it? Either send a link to someone who you think will find it valuable or take a screenshot and post it into your social media and tell your friends and family why they should listen it. Make sure you tag me so I can hear your feedback and give you a little love. And you know, If you aren't already following me on Instagram or TikTok, that's the perfect time to hit that follow button. Thank you for being here and listening to Fit Me to a Fitness Podcast.